Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on an in-flight vintage US Airways Airbus A330-300 and their navy blue livery scheme in a 1200 scale model. I pre-ordered and purchased this model from Easy Toys and their website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular vintage aircraft model, please allow me to share you some information about the history of U.S. Airways and how they actually came about. U.S. Airways was an American-based airline that was founded in 1937 as All-American Aviation Incorporated in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by DuPont family brothers Richard C. DuPont and Alexis F. DuPont Jr. and officially commenced operations two years later in 1939 and operated under that airline's name until 1949 when the company was renamed All-American Airways as it switched from air mail to passenger service and operated under that airline's name until it was changed again to Allegheny Airlines on January 1st, 1953 and operated under the Allegheny Airlines name for 26 years until the airline changed its name to U.S. Air in 1979 following the 1978 passage of the Airline Deregulation Act, which took place the year before in 1978, which allowed the airline to expand its route network into the southeastern part of the United States of America. Then fast forward to 1997, and that's when U.S. Air changed its airline name to U.S. Airways and operated under the U.S. Airways name until the airline was eventually acquired by American Airlines on December 9, 2013 and officially ceased operation as an airline on October 17, 2015. Prior to the merger with American Airlines in 2013, U.S. Airways was one of the major flag carrier airlines of the United States of America whereas the corporate headquarters of U.S. Airways was located in Tempe, Arizona, while the airline's main hub and base of operations was located on the grounds of Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport, which is located approximately three miles southeast of downtown Phoenix, Arizona, and Maricopa County, Arizona, whereas the other operational hubs of U.S. Airways was located on the grounds of Charlotte Douglas International Airport, located in Charlotte, North Carolina, Philadelphia International Airport, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Reagan Washington National Airport, located in the Washington, D.C. suburb of Arlington, Virginia. U.S. Airways previously flew to 193 destinations in 24 countries across three inhabited continents with an operating fleet of 331 aircraft that included 24 Airbus A330s, in which 15 of those were the Airbus A330-200s, while the remaining nine of those were the Airbus A330-300, including this one you're looking at here. And in addition to the 331 aircraft that previously operated in the U.S. Airways fleet, the airline also has unfulfilled orders for an additional 57 more aircraft, which included four more Airbus A330-200s, as these aircraft, as well as the carrier's aircraft orders, were eventually transferred over to American Airlines after the merger acquisition that took place between American Airlines and U.S. Airways on October 17, 2015. U.S. Airways previously operated as a certified three-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm, Skytrax Magazine, and the Airbus destination code for U.S. Airways on this particular aircraft was 23X. All right, everyone. Let's take a look at the front of the box here, and what you're looking at is the aircraft type, the airline's logo, the U.S. Airways billboard title, the computer-generated picture of the aircraft, uh, the in-flight 200 decal logo, the next generation of 1200 scale diecast aircraft model and item number information see at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the back of the box and what you see is the in-flight 200 decal logo. And then there's the, uh, the app, you know, you can download that app and put it on your phone, you know, either Apple or Android. And then there's the bar scan code you see there as well as the warning information and the item number you see at the back of the box. Okay, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the aircraft type, the airline's corporate logo, the U.S. Airways billboard title, the computer-generated picture of the aircraft, the registration ship number, the 1-200 scale model information, the website of in-flight models you see there, 
the item number as well as the in-flight 200 decal logo you see at the top of the box. All right, now you're looking at the bottom of the box. It's pretty much the same information at the top of the box I just showed you earlier on, okay? All right, now you're looking at this metal model stand that actually came with the model. In the bottom of the model stand is a customized plaque you see here. And inside that customized plaque is the airline's corporate logo, the U.S. Airways titles, the aircraft type, as well as the 120 scale model information inside this customized plaque. And then you come up this way. You see this black pattern right here, folks? The sole purpose of that black pattern is that pad not only protects your model, it also prevents from being damaged or scratched when you decide to put your aircraft model on this particular model stand. All right. All right, now you're looking at this plastic bag here. What you see inside this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, featuring the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement model, gear replacement doors on this particular aircraft model. Sorry about that. All right. All right. With all that information out of the way about the history of U.S. Airways and how they actually came about. And plus all the details here at the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, plus the actual metal model stand that came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors and the two little toothpicks inside that plastic bag. And with no further ado, everyone, here is the actual model out of the packaging box. Let's check it out. There it is, everyone. The in-flight vintage U.S. Airways Airbus A330-300 in their navy blue livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. Alright, allow me to educate you on this livery scheme you see on this aircraft. This was the livery scheme of U.S. Airways, which was actually called the navy blue livery scheme, as this iconic livery scheme was unveiled shortly after U.S. Air was officially rebranded as U.S. Airways on February 27, 1997, whereas the upper half of the fuselage was painted in a very dark navy blue tone, while the lower half of the fuselage was painted in a lighter gray tone, as the two particular colors of the aircraft on the aircraft were separated by a pair of red and white sheet line stripes you see there, right there, whereas the U.S. Airways billboard title was painted in a white serif font, which was accompanied by a stylized flag logo which is actually displayed next to the U.S. Airways billboard title as well as on the tail fin of the aircraft that was painted in gray as the tail fin of the aircraft was also painted in a very dark navy blue color tone that matched the color of the upper half of the fuselage of the aircraft. As Air U.S. Airways sported this livery scheme for eight years, from 1997 up until this livery scheme was eventually replaced with the airline's final livery scheme, which was unveiled and introduced sometime in 2005. So, with all that information out of the way about this particular livery scheme you see on here, with no further ado, everyone, let us get down to the nitty gritty and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model. Show we? Let's check it out and let's begin. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the um, front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the... Uh, Fleet number 678, the Peter 2s, what have you, the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those uh, details later on in the review. But you see the nice little red and white cheat line you see right here that I mentioned earlier. It stretches all the way back to the rear of the fuselage of the aircraft as well, as you can see there. But right above the windows is the airline's corporate logo. You see this right here, right next to the U.S. Airways billboard title. And this was the last corporate logo for American-based carrier U.S. Airways, as this stylized logo actually resembles that of the American flag decal, as this logo can also be visibly seen on the tail fin of the aircraft as well. Let's check it out. There it is. The corporate logo is painted on this uh, navy blue tail fin the aircraft as well all right all right now you're looking at the center of the aircraft and right underneath the wings are the uh, outer landing bogey gears you see here very detailed there which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors and more important you see these nice looking massive engines you see here okay 
Okay. A little vision blur there, but it's okay now. Okay. And these engines you're looking at right here are the Pratt & Whitney PW4168 Alpha Turbofan type engines that were used on this particular U.S. Airways Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft. And you see the little details on the engine column there as well. And then there's the engine cones right there. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to actually find out if the turbo fan blades do spin. Let's check it out and find out. All right. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the uh, port slash left side of the aircraft. And let's see if the turbo fan blades spin over here. Oh, yes, they do. Perfect. And then there's the inboard land light right underneath the wing right there, as well as the front visual view of the outer landing bogey gears you see on the side of the aircraft, which features the landing gear struts as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard slash right side of the aircraft. And then do these engines over here spin as well, fan blade? Yes. And then there's the inboard land light right underneath there, as well as the front visual view of the outer landing bogey gears on this side of the aircraft that also features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, which is painted in gray, the windshield wipers, the radon nose cone, the front nose landing gear door, as well as the landing gear lights inside of the front nose landing gear door, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, now you're looking at the painted red, white, and blue uh, winglet wingtip device you see there, as well as the red navigation light that sits next to this winglet wingtip device. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side, and right above the windows and next to the registration ship number is the American flag decal. You see this little decal right here. And that flag decal actually represents the country where U.S. Airways used to operate from as one of the major flag carrier airlines of the United States of America until the airline was acquired by American Airlines on December 9, 2013. And right next to the registration, right next to the American flag decal, sorry about that, is the actual registration ship number, which is N678US, which is this registration ship number you're looking at here. Registration ship number N678US. This particular aircraft was the ninth and final Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft that actually entered the U.S. Airways fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on February 12, 2001 and was delivered to U.S. Airways as registration ship number N678US on March 1, 2001. Then the registration ship number on this particular aircraft was eventually changed to registration ship number N278AY on July 31st, 2006 and operated in the U.S. Airways fleet for 12 years until it was eventually acquired by American Airlines after the merger acquisition between U.S. Airways and American Airlines took place on December 9, 2013 and operated in the American Airlines fleet in their livery scheme from December 2013 up until this aircraft was eventually withdrawn from service on March 31, 2020. Then this aircraft was ferried to the Roswell International Air Center Storage Facility, which is located in Roswell, New Mexico, shortly thereafter, where this aircraft is currently stored up at as of May 2022 or at the time of this video review posting. All right, now looking at the tail fin of the aircraft, which is mostly navy blue. And then there's the red up here, the white, as well as the gray here, featuring the airline's corporate logo, which I mentioned earlier, which resembles that of the American flag. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft, and what you're looking at is the APU, the Zero Rare Power Unit Exhaust Hole, and there's the actual hole there. Check it out. There, and underneath there is a little strobe light right there, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is. The vintage U.S. Airways Airbus A330-300 in their navy blue livery scheme from the rear view angle. Awesome. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard slash right side of the aircraft. We're going to start at the, here, the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the fleet number on here, 678, you see there, the pita tubes, the radon nose cone, 
the uh, cockpit windows, the U.S. Airways billboard title, as well as the airline's corporate logo, um, the uh, front cargo container loading door, the inboard land light, as well as the red and white cheat line that stretches all the way back to the rear of the fuselage as well. As you can see this right now. There. Now you're looking at the center of the aircraft, and underneath the wings, you're looking at the uh, Pratt & Whitney PW4168 Alpha turbofan type engines on this side of the aircraft as well. See the engine cones right there, and then the little details on the engine column, as well as the side vision view of these outer landing bogey gears you see here on this side of the aircraft that features the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the painted red, white, and navy blue painted winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the green navigation like you see displayed next to this winglet wingtip device. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft and what you see here, you can barely see them, but they're there. The uh, rear cargo container loading door, the AFT boat bin door, the American flag decal, the registration ship number, as well as the uh, navy blue tail fin, the aircraft features the red and white and the corporate airlines logo to see displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft as well. All right, before I show you this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view, as well as the undercarriage belly view in full detail in its entirety, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. Let's check it out. It rolls pretty good. All right. It does tilt, as you can see there, and the front nose landing gear swivels as well as you see there, there, and there. So, with no further ado, everyone, let's check this aircraft model out from the aerial bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view, where we're going to start at the front of the aircraft, where you see the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. And then you slide up this way, you see the uh, Wi-Fi box antenna. Then you see the U.S. Airways uh, titles and the uh, airline's logo on both sides of the aircraft. And then the anti-collision beacon light. A high-frequency antenna. And then that's the uh, vertical stabilizer known as the tail fin. And then that's the horizontal stabilizer right there featuring the black dot right there. And the dot over here as well. Those little dots are actually called illuminator lights, everyone. And the sole purpose of that illuminator light is those illuminator lights that it actually light up this tail here when it used to fly during nighttime. Now, let's check out the wings and the engines from above. There's the engines right there. And there's the wings right there. No no uh, wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, ailerons, sports, what have you. Warning information, fuel dump valve, no, fuel dump dive right there, as well as the uh, winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft. Now, let's check out over here. Engines there, top of the wings there, no wing walkway over here either, but you got the flaps, slats, ailerons, coils, what have you. Uh, warning information, fuel dump valve, as well as the blended as well as the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft was mostly light gray you see here. So at the front there as well we see the uh, radon nose cone. The A330, that's the aircraft variant, what this aircraft is. The crew escape hatch door. And then you see the front nose landing gear door as well as the front nose landing gear. And then you slide up this way. The high frequency antenna, the anti-collision beacon light, the in-flight 200 decal logo. The hole where the model stand goes in at. A couple high frequency antennas you see there. APU housing doors as well as the horizontal stabilizer you see there. Now let's check out the gears here. Perfect. The engine's there. As well as the wings underneath includes the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoils, what have you, fuel dump valve, 
as well as the um, blended painted red, white, and blue wingtip wing device on the side of the aircraft. Let us check out over here. The gears right there. No problem tilting, but that's okay. See the engines there, as well as the wings underneath, includes the flaps, slats, aileron sports, what have you, fuel dump valve, as well as the painted red, white, and blue wing wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, since I showed you this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view as well as the undercarriage belly view in its entirety in full detail, now I'm going to put it on a nice little metal model stand you see over there that came with the model that I showed you earlier. So with no further ado, here is the aircraft model on the model stand. Let's check it out. All right, fine got this model on the stand, no problem, no hesitation, as you see it being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand. Now I'm going to let this model rotate in a clockwise rotation. Let's check it out from the port side you're looking at here. Now you're looking at the tail cam angle of the aircraft. Now you're looking at the starboard side of the aircraft. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft. And back to the port side of the aircraft. All right, before I take this model to stand, I got it at this angle for a reason. And the reason is, is the magnetic gears that actually came with the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them all off and let you see what I'm talking about. Starting at the front nose landing gear here first. There, that's magnetic. The outer bogey gear here on the port side, you see there, that's magnetic. As well as the uh, outer bogey gear here on the starboard side, that's magnetic as well. So... With all the gears off this aircraft model, I'm going to let you look at this model at a different angle in flight mode that has gears up position without the gears. Check it out. All right, now you're viewing this model in flight mode position without the gears and the gears up position with the model on the stand. Now, you got one or two options how you want to display your model from this point on. If you choose to leave it like this in flight mode that has gears up position without the gears, that's fine. You see this plastic bag here that I showed you earlier? That features the gear replacement doors inside that plastic bag. Features the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors. So you substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode so that has gears up position without the gears. Or you can do like I do, keeping the gear down position. Gears up, gears down, your choice. I choose to keep mine on there because that adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model. Take this model off the stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right. All right, the seating configuration. The U.S. Airways Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft seated 291 passengers in a two-class configured cabin layout. All right, everyone, here is the breakdown. Rows 1 to 7, which will be from here to about right here. You had 28 Envoy Business Class fully flatbed suites. And rows 8 to 41, which will be about from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft you had an additional 263 economy class seats which brought the total 291 seats 291 seats sorry about that and finally and also prior to the merger with american airlines in 2013 u.s airways previously employed their airbus a330-300s on route to worldwide destinations from charlotte north carolina to destinations such as cancun mexico frankfurt germany London Gatwick, London Heathrow, Munich, Germany, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Phoenix, Arizona, and Rome Fumicino, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to destinations such as Cancun, Mexico, Dublin, Ireland, Frankfurt, Germany, London Heathrow, Los Angeles, California, Manchester, England, Madrid, Spain, Munich, Germany, Orlando, Florida, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Rome Fumicino, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Venice, Marco Polo, Italy, and Zurich, Switzerland, and from Phoenix, Arizona to Charlotte, North Carolina. Those were the routes. 
Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I like to know you're going to get this model as well if you can find it. Because I can tell you right now, most of the deals are pretty much sold out of this model. So you only have a chance of getting this model if you find it there. It's on eBay. But if you can't find it there, you're pretty much out of luck. So with that said, if you can snatch it up, please do so. Highly recommend it. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. And above all, everyone, please stay safe out here. Peace.